they needed some excuse to uh, to deny their creator. I think Christians do apologetics and atheists do apologetics for completely different reasons, actually op opposite reasons. Yep. Christians right. do it, I think, because because it's the truth and because they seek to show other people the truth and lead people out of this uh, nonsense materialistic uh, dogma that the world is uh, in, in, in strangled by right now, and also, uh, but atheists do it for another reason. I think atheists do it to silence their conscience. They're not motivated by helping anybody, by showing anybody reality or the truth, or by helping anybody learn anything. They're doing it for because their conscience is bothering them, and they feel like if they can convince somebody else that there's no reason to believe in God. They can tell their conscience, oh, whew, I'm safe. You know, I, I can wipe my brow, the sweat off my brow. I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry. They're seeking that confirmation yes. of their, yeah. to shut their conscience up. The dogma is of materialism is, is so rife. When, when you try to tell um, uh, the, the average layperson atheist that the reason that the, uh, the reason that uh, the education we get in schools is all very materialistic and evolutionary. It's all about evolution. Is not because uh, the scientific evidence has shown it to be true, but because right. uh, of two things. One, because uh, there are uh, 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 groups of uh, unseen people or, or, or people who work behind the scenes in this world to ensure that this will be the case. Sure. And because there were, uh, because of a coup that took place in the scientific community uh, just prior to Darwin, and has been maintained a, a, a militaristic grip on the scientific and uh, ac academia ever since. They don't believe you. They think no, that's conspiracy, Christian yeah. conspiracy theory. But no, it's actually true. The, the the truth about the evolution theory, how it came to dominate the, the scientific community, is that uh, uh, Charles Lyell and uh, a few of his pals uh, got together behind closed doors and decided that they Huxley. were going to oust everybody. Huxley was one. Yep. Huxley got, was in there, and Darwin's grand, Darwin's family, his grandfather, I mean, that whole group, that elitist group was into that. Oh, yeah. And they created and, that false dichotomy of, of uh, you know, the, the, the science versus religion Right. That's what they tried to turn it into. And, and uh, what happened is that they, they held meetings behind closed doors. They made a decision that there was not going to be any more Christians or creationists allowed in science. And if you were a creationist, they were going to do one or two things. They were going to mock you and, and, and to the point that you would no longer even want to show up for their meetings. Or they were just going to just ignore you completely. And you would just get disgusted and stop showing up. And so that's exactly what they did. And they even created campaigns to mock the uh, creationists in the media. Uh, there was one account where Thomas Huxley paid a news reporter, um, I forgot what newspaper, I think it was the New York Times or the New York Post. Uh, this was back in the mid-1800s, to, uh, to, to, to uh, print an article with his name on it as though he wrote it. But Huxley actually wrote the article. Yeah. And and the news item was, uh, you know, creationists are trying to uh, show that they have a case, but you know, and it's just mocking, mocking creationists. And, and what the whole thing was, and it's going all the way through. It was, the Scopes trial was a facade. That, that the whole yeah. Scopes trial was a setup to do that. Yeah, it was, and it was all a facade. Uh, yeah. the, the news uh, reporter didn't even write it. Huxley wrote it, gave it to the guy, paid him some money to put his name on it and print it. And it was, the whole purpose was uh, to try to sway the public opinion that science had to finally has truly destroyed Christianity and creationism. And, and look how dumb these creationists are. You know, if you can just get them to think, oh, really? I didn't know it was so thoroughly proven that evolution is true and creation, Christian creationism is false. Wow, I didn't know that. Right. You know, because of, uh, that's what they wanted the public to, to get. And it's always from the beginning like and that. It was a facade. It's always been put out as a foregone conclusion, you know? It's just a foregone conclusion that, you know, they're always, they always want to take the, the scientific high ground as if there's no other plausible theories out there. Yeah. Um, 
and it's been going. The Scopes trial was just the setup, and you see it all the way through today. Like um, Dr. Damadian, who did the MRI. Um, are you familiar with him? The oh yeah, he didn't get his MRI. He should have gotten his award, and he didn't get it. Yeah, they wouldn't even give him the award for that. No, and they not even patents. My my brother lived with him for a summer during yeah. college back in the nineties. Wow. Uh, lived in his basement and worked for his uh, MRI company. For, for anybody that's listening and doesn't know what he's talking about, the, the man that invented the MRI machine uh, is a young earth creationist Christian scientist, and he was ignored by the scientific community. He should have received a Nobel they Prize. They got pictures of him with Reagan giving him awards, shaking his hands, but then when they gave out the Nobel Prize for the invention, they gave it to some other guys. And his he had to spend like 15 years in the courts fighting some large corporations that I think Johnson and Johnson several companies that swooped in and just started making the product just totally stole his patent oh I didn't um, know about that yeah and then by the time he uh, you know he finally won some court cases and got retribution but by then you know <laughs> wow. they had taken taken the technology beyond that so he, he's got That's the, now if this guy had been an evolutionist who invented it oh he'd have had that award they'd been patting him on the back stuffing cigars in his mouth and brandy in his hand well, that, well, another thing that's, that sickens me is that how they twist the truth they talk about Gregor Mendel as though his his work supported evolution theory the truth is it supported <laughs> creation you know <laughs> he, uh, it was all of his experiments. For years because it refuted evolutionary. Theory. Yeah, it did. All of his experiments demonstrated that life begets after its kind with no new anatomical features. It produces <laughs> only what it already has, what its parents had, and what its grandparents and great grandparents had. Nothing new to the body plan. The anatomy is the same, no matter how it varies. Nothing new to the anatomy. That's what Greg Mendel's work showed, and that's exactly what the Bible says. Life produces after its kind. It doesn't produce any other kind. It doesn't even cause change to anatomy. There's no mechanism to yeah. that. And so the evolutionist, this is the dishonesty uh, of the twisted way of thinking of the, the uh, materialist camp. They take this uh, scientific, historic uh, a body of work that this Greg, Gregor Mendel uh, created, and they'll twist the truth and say that it supported evolution theory. The truth is, it refutes it. Uh, this is the mindlessness, the dishonesty that you get from these people. They needed some excuse to uh, to deny their creator. Uh, Thomas Huxley said, "I suppose the reason we leapt at the origin of species was because the idea of God interfered with our sexual mores." Yeah. Yeah, and Thomas uh, and 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 Huxley also, uh, Thomas Henry Huxley, eighteen eighty seven said, the origin provided us with a working hypothesis we sought. So we're all right there, you see the motivation. We're seeking a hypothesis, right? Yeah, Moreover, it did motivation. the immense service of freeing us from the uh, forever from the dilemma. Refuse to accept the creation hypothesis, and what have you to propose that you can accept in, by any cautious uh, reason? In 1857, I had no answer ready, and I do not think anyone else had. A year later, we reproached ourselves with dullness for having for being perplexed with such an inquiry. My yes. reflection, when I first made myself master of the central idea of the origin, was how extremely stupid not to have thought of that. I suppose that Columbus's camp, uh, companions said much the same thing when the egg when they, he made an egg stand on end. And he just it, admits. That uh, they they didn't come up with evolution theory or promote it for the reason that it's scientific. And it's, it's still because it provided them, they think, with an intellectual excuse for denying the God.